Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, Baron Davis stops by to talk about LeVar Ball's impact on Lonzo. Plus, reaction to LeBron James' dominant performance against the Hawks. And is it ridiculous for Jerry Jones to compare Dak Prescott to Peyton Manning? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Lonzo Ball had a solid performance last night, finishing with 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists as the Lakers lost to the Knicks. Lonzo's entire family sat in the front row for the game, and his dad, LeVar, spent much of the night trash-talking Spike Lee. ESPN also reported yesterday that Magic Johnson and GM Rob Palenka had a meeting with LeVar a few weeks ago, asking him to tone down his public criticism of Luke Walton. We're joined by former NBA All-Star and UCLA alum, Baron Davis. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Good to hello. have you. So? When does he stop? Okay, okay. Start again. <laughs> what impact do you think LeVar has had on Lonzo this season, Baron? Um, you know, I would say it's the same impact he's been having. You know, uh, that's his dad. Um, you know, and it's, and to me, the only thing about Alonzo is he has this like this crazy spotlight in this magnifying glass. When you watch him play as a rookie, he make rookie mistakes. He do great things, bad things, frustrating. But you know you see the promise, you see the potential, and he don't say nothing. You know what I mean? He go out and he ball. So I don't really see negative or positive. You know what I mean? It just is what it is. That's their relationship, and that's really how they rock. But the mere fact that Magic Johnson will request a meeting with the father of the second pick in the draft, isn't that concerning to you? Yeah, I mean, you know, one, he the father and he the CEO of, you know, the clothing, <laughs> yeah. you know, the... The, the, the baller uh, brand. Yeah, the baller brand. So, you know, um, Magic and Rob Palenka have every right, you know what I mean, to approach him and to say that. And he got every right to, you know... Tone but, it down, but at the same time, he got every right, you know, as a CEO of his brand to keep doing what he's doing to keep pushing the spotlight on his son and his brand. So you're a UCLA man, obviously, and we keep going back and forth because we did not hear publicly from LeVar last season as Lonzo played for your Bruins. Right. And yet... We're starting to wonder if behind the scenes he might have been exerting a little pressure on Steve Alford or the coaching staff to, to do his bidding the way he's coached Lonzo all the way up from age five. Did you hear anything about what was going on at no. UCLA? <laughs> no. You know, uh, if you got a player like Lonzo, right, if I'm the coach, I'm going to give him the ball because, you know, I'm going to trust that he makes the best decisions. And when you got a point guard like that that's special, you know, like a lot of these young point guards are, you got to play the way they are most comfortable and, and the way they're going to be most successful, you know, because they're going to make everybody better. So Lonzo at UCLA, you know, when you, when you watched him the year before, they struggled because they didn't get easy shots. As soon as he comes in, they get easy shots. We're about to win the national championship. I believed in LeVar, too. I thought we was going to win it. Um, just because of, you know, having that piece, it allow people to, it, it allow people that freedom. So if, if, if you have a kid like that, a point guard like that, you know, you just kind of like got to give them the freedom and let them go, let them make mistakes because they're going to learn fast. But how, I mean, Luke Walton's in a very tough position. He's trying to win games, but he's also trying to get uh, Lonzo quality minutes and get him ready for the foreseeable future. But it's plus minus is the worst on the team. He's shooting the worst of all qualified shooters. His three-point is terrible. He doesn't get to the – half the time he doesn't even attempt a free throw. So that's terrible. So how, how, how do I play him with his plus-minus so bad and him not being good in the fourth quarter? How do I justify that with the other guys? And they're trying to win. They want to win. I want to win. But I want to play I – I need to play Lonzo. Yeah. Um, you know, did you see the Lakers play last year? I did. Were you talking about him? No. Absolutely not. Did you go watch him play? Uh, Braun came to town. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> this year, right, mm -hmm. are they more exciting to watch? Yeah, but they're right? losing just as much. Yeah, but they're more exciting to watch. They have promise. They've beaten teams. You know what I mean? They're winning games they're not supposed to win. It's a much better opportunity, and it's a much better promise. Would you rather pay $500 for a bad meal or $20 for a bad meal? The meal's just bad. Uh, it's still bad, right? It depends on the show. Okay, we, okay. They look, they look good. I mean, they're getting up and down the court. They get some easy baskets, and they've shown some good things. But at the end of the day... Who's the I, better point? You know, it's like, look, you got to throw this kid to the fire, right? Okay. This kid makes good decisions. He, made, You know, uh, Brandon Ingram hit the game-winning shot. Who made the play? Right. 
This guy is making plays, dude. So you can look at the percentage. You can look at free throws, field goal percentage, three point, and Rondo started for the Boston Celtics, mm -hmm. okay? And he and everybody said he couldn't shoot, and he turned out to be a great point guard. He could. They said they said Tony Parker when he came in, that he couldn't shoot. They said I, I yeah. couldn't shoot. So you know, the first year is gonna be tough. It's always gonna be tough on you because you, you're not you're not strong. You can't get to your spots, and every like you, you you're questioning the shots you're taking. That's just a rookie. But your dad, but your dad wasn't telling people about. Uh, uh, I had remember. no daddy. Oh, you, know, <laughs> you had no you had no significant person. But if, if I had a dad like Levar, you know what I mean? I, it it would have supercharged me to be able to go out and like it, it probably would have put more pressure on me to go out to be to want to be greater than what I, what I wanted to be. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and, and, and so that's, you know, a lot of it is a gift and a curse, but for me, I'm just kind of like sitting back watching it because it's entertaining, you know what I mean? Rob, Magic say, I don't want to, I want the entertainment <laughs> product to be on the court. On the court, Not for in sure. the stands. No, for sure. For so sure. what do you think about what the father has done with the second two sons, pulling them out of school, and now they're going to, we the guess, Lithuania to play pro basketball? Yeah, I don't really have no, uh, that's a hard one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What I think he's doing is he's challenging the system, right? The system is flawed, period, point right. blank. Like, from the NCAA to high school basketball to AAU you know? basketball, that system is flawed. And so, you know, let's get his dude some credit for saying, you know what? Like, I'm not going to let you dictate, how, this system dictate how my kids are going to turn pro. I'm going to do that. You but know it what seems I mean? to me, once he couldn't control the situation, because this was never an option right. until Jello hey, could not, could not. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So how you challenge it? You challenge the system once the system doesn't work for you. Yeah, but the system has known to fail. Yeah. Thousands and thousands of kids. Yes. Yeah. Right. So if I'm a proud parent and I love my kids, hold on, dude. I got a chance. And now the t it, it, what better time to do it now? Before there's been parents suing the NCAA. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, there's been all kind of like players who who were supposed to make it that just fell by right. the wayside. Just you know what I mean? Like those misnamed people. No parents. You know what I right. mean? Now the time is you can you can leave high school go overseas. You can leave high school, go to China. It's okay. It's basketball. It's your profession. So, so he has every right as a parent to be like, hold on, dude, you're going to spend my kid for what? You know, for how long? Yeah. You know, you're yeah, going to ruin his see. career? Yeah. No, no, long? no. He did that. He didn't think about that no, before. No, of course. Okay. Look, look. I mean, I mean, and it's also that, you know, that falls on the authority too. You what know what I'm saying? Just, you know, the, it, it, just when you go into China, yeah. it falls on the authority, too. You know what I mean? They went, oh, oh, yeah. it's Come just on, Baron, stop. Have you been to China? Yes. I, no, I've been, been to Japan. I haven't okay. been to China. All right. Have you mean, you, you, when, you get, when you go to China, right, Yeah. they tell you, do not do anything in China. I'm just saying. Okay. Right? When you, when you, yeah. did, did they get that message? You know so, what I mean? So are you holding the coaching staff? No, staff? I'm just saying the whole system. I'm holding the whole system responsible. I know those kids made mistakes. You know what I mean? Okay. And now it's showing that the system is flawed, hold on. right? But Baron, hold on. Wait a minute. Now, you know China, Indonesia, America, Germany, Russia, you can't steal other people's yeah, but, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, I, don't, I don't know the story, though. You know the story. I don't know the they story. They took something that didn't belong to them. Absolutely. He said on national television, everybody was taken. I was like, well, I'm going to get my turn to take it. <laughs> now, you drive a Lamborghini. It. I know, they did it in time. China. They did it in yeah. China. You, I mean, that's... You got a that's, Lamborghini. Yeah. And you stealing stuff. I don't get it. I don't get it. And, and, but... You know what I mean? It's China, man. Like they got you. Got to let them kids know. Like, yo, you're not in the United States of America. I ain't nobody ever you know. I mean, when you went out, you ain't been to China. When I've you go to China, they go. There's certain rules and certain. Countries. Where can you? Where, where can you go and steal people's stuff? And it's okay. nowhere. Okay. Nowhere. So I need to tell you that. But where's the chaperone? Why? Why do they have the freedom to go out and they steal? They went to the team. So yeah. you needed a chaperone not to go steal? Man, I need a chaperone in China, period. <laughs> no, no, back, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't excuse. See, period. You, you, see, that, you do the same. Period. See, you're doing the I'm not doing a lot. You're doing the doing same thing LeVar. LeVar did I'm because not, he pushed I'm not excusing. I'm not excusing them stealing. I'm not excusing them being kids. Like, how many kids 
in college still and be like, dog, why did you do that? They wrong. You know what I mean? Because they it's wrong. just a lot you're of dumb. People, a lot you're of a dumb kid and how you many, do dumb things. How about this? How much dumb stuff did you do when you were 17, 18 years old? If that, I had, was my that, brother made pro that, and, you, I had, wait, and I had a Ferrari, and if I was in and, and, and you were in China, yes. imagine all the dumb stuff you did. You know what I mean? I ain't stealing. You ain't never stolen. No. Nothing. Well, I mean, some, some <laughs> exactly. the four got my grandma. Well, exactly. Before, 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 we let you go, before we let you go, tell us about the your Black Santa uh, Company. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, I always come with, uh, you know, some gifts. Yes, you so, do. So uh, I just wanted to, you know, the Black Santa Company, we dropped our mixtape. Uh, it's booming. And we just got more product for y'all. I hope you got a double X Appreciate for me this that. time. Hey man, I got you this time. I mean, you had me a you had me on a bridge press shirt. That shirt, that sweatshirt was well, so tight. Yeah, because like yeah, anyway. you like tight suits, ah, though. So it's like it's hard to figure out your size. Green. Yeah. What you mean, Green. figure out my size? Thank you very much. Think about figure out my size. You know good well I ain't no large. Joy a large. How dare you? <laughs> okay, Actually, well, I don't care if it's a large. Yeah, not, uh, so we just uh dropped Hello. Next oh, I love it. Yeah, I got the king. They know. <laughs> you supposed to put 23 on the back. So you just have to put Petty underneath Nah, 15, man. Martin Luther King. You know, oh, okay, birthday. okay. That's cool. Thank what, you what, very what much, you get, Skip? Baron. I don't know. Hater. <laughs> Skip ain't showing, you know. Skip Skip's don't giving his private. Thank you very much. And where can, yeah. people, where can people go check out Black Santa Company? BlackSanta.com. Check out the mixtape. Uh, you know, animation now. And so next year or the year after, we should be putting the movie together. Don't put awesome. no short where, they, where kids steal it. Well, I, I got to have that, because it's a lesson. <laughs> Let's keep it real. <laughs> Aaron, thanks for joining us. All right. No mercy. Lonzo Ball made his highly anticipated Madison Square Garden debut last night. Magic Johnson was there, and Lonzo's entire family, LeVar, his mom Tina, LiAngelo, and LaMelo, were in the front row. LeVar <laughs> was just a few seats down from Spike Lee, who he trashed chalk with throughout the game. The Lakers lost in overtime, but Lonzo finished with 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. Ugh. ESPN also reported yesterday that Magic Johnson and GM <laughs> Rob Polinka had a meeting with LeVar a few weeks ago asking him to tone down his public criticism of Luke Walton. Mm. We're joined by FS1. Oh, sorry. Then LeVar said everybody's going. He, he's still There's talking. more. Ego <laughs> thing. Sorry, LeVar, LeVar always has more to say. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm trying to tell them what to do, or they'll be trying to tell me to tone it down. It's mm. not about that. It's about coming together and to get a solution to this problem. It may sound crazy to other people, but I really just want the best for Lonzo, and the best for Lonzo is going to be what's best for the organization, because if everybody winning, we good. I'm gonna say whatever I wanna say, however I wanna say it. And they said, LeVar, come and talk to us first, so that's fine too. Now we're joined <laughs> by FS1 NBA <laughs> analyst Chris Broussard. Sorry about that. Chris, what do you think will be the impact of the meeting with LeVar? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> We've already seen it, right? Thank you. Didn't they meet in the summer? Didn't they have pancakes? He cooked yep. for Magic did. and Rob Palinka and him. said it's just did. marketing. Yep. And of course, he's been quiet ever since, right? Mm. Yeah. So he's already proven that that's not going to be the case. And the LA Times reported that this meeting that ESPN reported about took place on November 29th oh, okay. before they played Golden State. Mm -hmm. Six days later, is when LeVar went on Sirius XM radio and said Lonzo needs to be playing in the fourth quarters. So it, he's already mm. just, you know, not yeah. abided by their rule. <laughs> you know, so there are a few reasons LeVar won't do it. One, it's just not in him. It, clearly, it's just not his personality. What is he, 50 years old? Yep. 50 he's not changing his at this point. Secondly, he has a brand to market. Big baller brand. He's at a Facebook television show, or if that's what I can call it. Yeah. What is that show going to look like? What is big baller brand going to look like if all of a sudden he's quiet and tones it down and all that? They, well, they, they didn't say tone it down. They said just don't criticize us. Talk crazy. Well, he's already, he's already done that. And here, here's the third reason he won't tone it down. LeVar really believes he's part of the Lakers brain trust. Look at the quotes. We... It's about us coming together. You know, I think he feels like he got, he said he spoke it into existence that Lonzo would get drafted by the Lakers. All of his talk may have yep. been what got him to the Lakers. Mm -hmm. He's not stopping. It's worked so far. It may not be working basketball-wise for the three kids, right. but marketing and all of that is where he wouldn't be there with Spike Lee like that if he wasn't running his mouth. And what about the LeVar Ball rule? 
He's been quoted in ESPN since then. He's been quoted in LA Times since then. Last night he was on Sports Center again after the game at the guard. Like, none of this matters. The only thing that's going to help it is if Lonzo just balls. Mm -hmm. And he's, no pun intended, yeah, but if he's just playing well, mm -hmm. then it really won't be anything to complain about. But if they struggle, LeVar's going to be saying stuff. They, they did a pop-up store yes. on Fifth Avenue yesterday. I mean, this is... They said 5,000 people came? Big baller. Did they I buy wonder, anything? I, I, that's also I I'm wondering. I, I hope they I'll sold they something. Did. The problem is, is that he was on our show and he said that, hey, ask Steve Alford. I wasn't that there coaching. I wouldn't, hey, you do that. He said that he's going to turn his boy over. He said, I'm going to turn my boy over to Magic. Yep. That's the greatest point guard ever. I, I've taken him far as I can. So <laughs> I, I, I thought... And then you have a meeting. And then he said it, Skip. I'm going to say whatever yeah. I want, whenever I want. Mm -hmm. So the meeting comes with nothing. A seed. He said it's going, sometimes you got to plant a oh, seed. Okay, I'm going to say, they say we're running by us first. I got no problem with that, but I'm still going to say what I want to say. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. So y'all didn't, y'all won't be blindsided I don't by even, it. you think you'll do that? I don't no. think you'll do that. No, no, no. Because mm -hmm. he said yeah. sometimes I got to plant a seed and put it out there so you know. It's, Let's take a look at this. It's, hey, this thing is going to happen. It's going to keep going. But eventually, that smiling magic, you're going to put his foot down. Put it. Mm. It's going to be a matter of time. Mm. We'll see. Well, that could mean somebody has to go, like, out. Like, somebody's going to have to get traded, and it's a package deal of Lonzo and LeVar. And at some point, magic might just say, I just can't manage this. Sometimes anymore. you got to let the hair go uh, with the hide. Mm. If he, but if he plays well... I don't think Magic uh, I'm with you. And right? Magic is still enamored of this yeah. kid. He believes yeah. he is special. And by the way, this just tore me up last night because Lonzo, in his first ever night at the Mecca, you know it well, Madison Square Garden, he played pretty well. Yeah. He did some very good yeah. things in flashes and spurts and glimpses. You saw what was special here and there, right? Yeah. And then the father completely upstages the son. Completely. <laughs> High-fiving, <laughs> hugging, yeah. spice. Again, I'm going to say was, this again. I, I congratulate ESPN because they attempted not to feature LeVar during the telecast. And after a while, you can't help it. <laughs> he got a big he red just, shirt on, Skip. Thanks, he did have a big red shirt. He six, six with a big yeah, red I, shirt on. He's yeah. jumping all over the place. <laughs> what is, what you're turning then, around, looking yeah. in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. That's my son. Did you see what my, my son just made a three? Yeah, I did like the big old Kool-Aid, man. Well, <laughs> hey, cool lad in the big hey, red shirt. He like, hey, hey, hey look at my boy. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I was cringing over this because I love Spike Lee. <laughs> I wish Spike had kind of ignored him because by association, it looked like they were on equal celebrity footing because they're <laughs> trash talking and clowning with each mm -hmm. other, right? And it kind of legitimizes LeVar <laughs> that, that Sp the great Spike Lee is actually cutting up with it. <laughs> and Spike normally, yes, sir. Spike normally gets into it with the players on the court. Reggie he, Miller. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Kobe, yeah. Oh, yep, he, yep. You, uh, hold on. Yeah, what, Spike what? was showing him love. Yeah. He was showing him a lot of love. <laughs> I would have been more convinced that the meeting might have some effect if LeVar and Magic had been sitting next to each other. I'm not saying know, they were avoiding it. But, you know, yep. sitting next to each other and LeVar wasn't doing all the antics. Then it would have been like, okay. Mm -hmm. They are maybe on the same page and they're one, but... He, he had the meeting and the dude criticized and said, that's why you're record raggedy. Because Luke Walton don't know how to coach my son. Now, he said this. Yep. And he's continuously said this, saying these things, even after meeting, even after he said on several occasions... Out of my hands now. Mm -hmm. Magic, take my kid A. The coach and the film study, you can take it much further than I can. I'm done with it. And I've said this, and Skip, I think Skip believes it now. It's hard for me to believe. He was this outspoken in high school, this outspoken in the NBA, but he was quiet on the church months in college. Come on now. He, he was, he was and publicly And everything quiet. went so well in college, because right? Because Steve Offer wanted just let him, boy. Yeah, and he just let Lonzo, Steve just let Lonzo do he his did, thing. Right. So and there he was, did, he did not sit him during the fourth quarter. Ex yeah. Once that happened twice, you have effectively declared war on LeVar. That's what LeVar yep. thinks. And that's the thing. Even though, like I said, I in his mind, he really feels like it's us. I'm a part of the decision-making mm -hmm. process. With, a, with high school, he's not the coach officially. Yep. 
But he's the coach. But he appointed the coach. Yeah, and he said, exactly. <laughs> so he feels like the same way with the Lakers. So what did intrigue me, and I'm a Lonzo believer, I did see more energy out of the kid last night. Mm -hmm. I saw more engaged. I saw more aggressive. I saw more assertive really because good. Father was sitting in the front row, and there was an interesting quote from Lonzo after the game about La uh, LeVar. He said, he's always going to be turned up, use your phrase. Yep. I like his energy, said Lonzo. Some don't. Well, he loves his energy. He feeds off his father's energy because his father is the flip side of the son who seems to be, from what I can gather, a little more of the mother's son. Mm -hmm. He's more laid back, mm -hmm. lower energy. He's unselfish to a fault. He doesn't want to force the issue either publicly or privately or to the media. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, as LeBron said, he doesn't say a word. Nope. The father says all the words, but the son is almost dependent upon the energy source that is the father, right? That's his Bundini Brown. It is. Like no, it is. <laughs> no, no, I agree. Right, man. And, it, and it could come to the point where he's so dependent, he was coached for so many years from five years old up by the father that maybe you brought this up earlier. At some point, you're almost going to have to get the father more involved on the bench. You know, like to be the bench coach. Remember how Danny Manning? Bring him yeah. on the bench. Danny yeah. Manning Sr. was that lad. Somehow Danny Manning went to Kansas. Mm -hmm. Somehow all these great high yeah, school players, yeah, yeah. their dad or their high school coach ends up on the team that they enroll at, at college. I, I, there's no way that will work. I know. I got no. it. But I'm just yes, saying man. there's some dependency there from number one son to father. I think that's a great point. However, LeVar is at all the home games. He is, is that he's different? Out of, I mean, it's a little, he's not, yeah, it's not right course. It's yeah. like there's the aisle and then he's in the first or second row. But, but I thought he wasn't going to be going to every game. He'd be like, I got other things. He wasn't going to be following him, right? Yeah. He's going to be with the boys he's training gonna the boys. He's going to be in Lithuania. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but he took, instead he took the boys out of school, so they all so, so, so Everybody's traveling. <laughs> so everybody's traveling. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens when they do go to Lithuania. Is he going to send them to Lithuania with, by going. themselves? They ain't going. You, that, not you might be right. He said good. he's going over there for a little while with and, them. And, and I was reading, like, sometimes this team, they don't pay their players. Now, he said it's not about the money. Just well, even when they do money. get paid, they make, like, what, 500 a month? 500 a month. Hey, normally, anytime somebody tell you it's not about the money, what is it about? The money. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's already reports that ball mania is taking over Lithuania. Already. <laughs> They will know. I mean, they follow Lithuania's know, basketball I crazy. Guess. They know about all these mm -hmm. American players, the including team. the young He's ones. an international superstar. Yeah. Not the B team. They had a pop-up shop in China. They had a pop-up shop you, in you New York. You mean It's yes, working Lavar. for a big... Well, I guess they're selling stuff. They're certainly getting a lot of publicity. But is it helping the boys basketball-wise? Because uh, at the end of the day, like LeBron say, winning... Not location mm -hmm. yeah. determines yeah. what people buy I don't know how price. much that matters to the kids anymore. Really? Th their dream has to be to get to the No, NBA. no, no. I'm, not, talk least I'm not talking about their kids. I'm saying kids, kids in general. Oh, oh, I, that's how we that, think. I don't think, no, I I think don't know right. that that's how kids think anymore. That's a good point. I, I, would so I don't know LeBron, how much it matters. I, mean, I like the 15, LeBron. <laughs> mm. Tell Chris you don't have any pairs of LeBron. I do. I got you all Jordans. I got I got a couple of LeBron. Did the South Beaches? I ain't telling you. No mercy. LeBron James and the Cavs keep on rolling. They beat the Hawks last night, and they've won 15 of their last 16. LeBron had 25 points and tied a career high with 17 assists, including a great behind-the-back pass to Kyle Korver for a three-pointer. <gasps> Let's take a listen to LeBron after the game. I can see plays happen before they actually happen. Um, it's been a gift of mine for a long time. And, um, you know, like I said, my teammates do a great job of, you know, you know making you know, kind of that gift that I have, you know, come to fruition at the end of it. So, um, you know, I've been blessed with the ability to see things before they happen out on the basketball floor. Mm. Liz Shannon, how impressive that, was LeBron last that night? That was humble. Man, that, I wanted to be humble. Tell it. <laughs> I believe in conspicuous consumption. If you have something flaunted, mm. I ain't trying to suppress what I have. He, he does have yes, the gift. Yes, flaunted. He's got, the he gift. got it. Yep. At some point, Skip Bayless, uh -huh. and I'm done. Today, I'm done with it. I'm going to stop saying this is LeBron being LeBron. He great. He ain't maintaining. He's still going up. Hmm. How? In year 15. Can he do this, Skip? Do you know last night tied the third highest field goal percentage of his career? Hmm. Third highest, Joy. Hmm. Is that good? <laughs> I mean, he shot 85% from the flow. He played 35 minutes. He got up 13 shots. 
Kawhi Leonard played 16 minutes last night, got up 12. Mm. Oh, when did Kawhi turn into Russell Westbrook? But this was like LeBron. Mm. Skip. You see, 17. We're, we're going to discuss you know, I don't want to talk about, I don't yeah. want to talk about he's, Kawhi he's right now. He's coming for He ain't coming for nothing. Yes, he is. Le, don't nobody want to see it. Mm. He called me the other night. Mm. He said, Shay, I hear, I hear what they say. Mm. He said, I hear. He said, I'll be listening. They be sending me clips of what Skip said, what everybody be saying. Who the closer now? Wait, he watches Undisputed. Don't worry about what he said. Me and Braun have private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> LeVar, I'm doing LeVar ball. I know he told yeah. me this in confidentiality, but I got to put yeah. it out there. Yeah. But anyway, well, who going to close for LeBron? He going to miss Kyrie. Mm. He told me. He said, Shay, I look at Kyrie like a Monday. Mm. He look better going than coming. So we gone. Be gone, Kyrie. Mm. Now let me show you what I'm capable of since I had to suppress who I naturally am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I do. 42% from the flow. Mm. 50. Skip, there have been seven guys. Yep. Well, Oscar did it five times. 28, 8, and 9. Hmm. Russ and Harden did it last year. One shot 41%, the other shot 42%. Hmm. LeBron James is shooting 58%. 58 as a three. Not, a, not Shaq, not DeAndre Jordan, hmm. not one of these guys that's shooting the ball from 8 and in. That's what he's doing on a nightly basis. Hmm. Now, remember last year he had 17 assists, and then he come back, that was year 14. Normally, people don't be setting career highs as they get late in their career. But obviously, LeBron, he's like, you know what? And Ty Lusa, hey, obviously, he's fourth quarter, PER, we already know, assisted mm -hmm. three-pointers. We already know all that, Skip. Mm. But at some point in time, even you got to be in awe of what you witness. And I passed to Kyle Corbin. He said, wait. He said, I got more of that. Mm. That wasn't that wasn't even my best. I done like seven of those in practice. Mm. Wait till you see this one between my leg from Cal Coke. Mm. He said that he told you that. Yeah, yeah. me and him be talking because I already told. You. It, what what made him upset, Skip, is that you and a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. Oh, James Harden, two games of twenty five seventeen. Mm. Hold his yak for me. Mm. <laughs> you saw that? Did you see what James Harden shot when he got those twenty five points? Mm. LeBron James, you saw what he shot? Yep. 13 shots. Lay him a 13. He make me sick. And I need, need to stop flirting with them triple doubles. Mm. Stop teasing me, LeBron, and go on and get it. 20, 25, 17, and 7. He make me sick. Seven? He only had seven? Seven rebounds. What is that about? What, no rebound? Turn it up, LeBron. How you going to get rebounds? Come you, on. How you going to get rebounds you taking the ball out the net? You saw there was 20 oh. or 38 from three. Ain't oh. nobody miss. Oh. But no rebounds to get. Tell me when it's my turn. Yeah, your turn. Thank you. <laughs> Before I address the bigger picture of how LeBron played last night and how he's played so far through whatever they played, 27 games. We 19. I, I have two questions that I need to ask. Okay. How is it that the Cleveland Cavaliers get to play the Atlanta Hawks like 30 times a year? Who did they skip? They play them 20 times a year just in Cleveland. Stop. And I don't get it. Does Stop. LeBron yeah. call the commissioner before the year and say, Commission need a little help, a little yeah. Eastern Conference help here. Hawks are going they're gonna be terrible. We we need to we need <laughs> like them on the, the Mavs. schedule. They terrible uh, like the Mavs. Uh, who beat your team with the your Mavericks guy back? The Mavericks are not terrible. Oh, oh they but they, they would just terrible. happen to be terrible when the Cavs played them. Okay, we get it. So the Atlanta Hawks, just for perspective, for those who have probably lost touch with the Hawks, they are now six and twenty-one, which is the worst record in the entire NBA. Mm -hmm. Six and twenty-one. And last night, they featured such players as Tarian Prince. You know Tarian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah had and, a good game. And how about Tyler Cavanaugh? Do you know Tyler Cavanaugh? Yeah, he's on a two-way contract. Yeah, he's a 6'9 center. He started at center last night for the Atlanta Hawks because he's on the two-way from the Erie Bayhawks. So mm -hmm. he's got to go back to the Erie Bayhawks. But yeah, he, he started he, he, in yeah. Cleveland yeah. at center for the Atlanta Hawks against LeBron James. Yeah. yeah. And then there's... DeAndre Bembry, you know DeAndre, right? Mm -hmm. Great player, DeAndre. He's how well, I many All Star teams? I, I don't remember, but a couple maybe. I, yeah. I forget. But then Isaiah Taylor, the immortal Isaiah Taylor. They're they're just stocked with names. That was, All Stars. That was the same team mm -hmm. that you was hating praise on when yeah. Kyrie closed the deal. They mm -hmm. had those same players mm -hmm. on the Hawks. They didn't play half Dominique. <sighs> so just for the record, against the pitiful, pathetic Atlanta Hawks, 6-21. Ah! and 21. <laughs> LeBron James played a game high, 35 minutes. Nobody on either team played more minutes than LeBron James played against the 6-21 and 21 Atlanta Hawks. Why is that? I don't know. Just a, just a question I have because 
he again stuffed the stat sheet, and he was really good. Those stats you just threw up, they're, they're shockingly great. That's LeBron at his best against the worst team in the NBA. And let's go all the way to the fourth quarter. May we? Mm-hmm. So Cleveland leads after three quarters, 94 to 77. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't this be a nice night for LeBron to maybe take the final quarter off? and save just a little bit of his mileage for the postseason when everybody expects LeBron nope. to at least get to the finals? He go Wouldn't there. it be? No, he didn't. He played a game high, nine minutes and 26 seconds of the fourth quarter. Kyle Corbin played 9 26 did. too. Okay, but I'm saying that's tied for a game high, right? Mm-hmm. So anybody else play any more minutes than 9 26? No. Nope, no. No, on either team. Nobody played more than 9 26 of a blowout against the worst team in the league. Actually, how can actually, you they, justify actually, this? Cut, actually, it was a 24 point lead that they cut it to 13. Oh, cut it to 13. So LeBron plays all the way to the 234 mark mm-hmm. of the game. 234 left in the game and at that point it's 121 to 105 and you're telling me you're afraid of Tyler Cavanaugh yeah he's going to hit a couple shots that are going to get you right back in the game Tyler Cavanaugh of the Erie Bayhawks you know what what, Skip this is what I'm starting to see Mm. when LeBron James put up it's not your turn yet it's not your turn because in the fourth quarter the stats got padded with three of three from the field way to go LeBron he even made a, he made a three in the he, he took and made a three. That's that's impressive. And he got a couple of rebounds. He should have gotten five or six rebounds because he had six assists in the fourth quarter to get to a career high 17 assists. You don't think he was aware of his numbers through three quarters? If that, I need to play against the pathetic Hawks to make sure I get my 17. Well, why not go ahead and play the final tw- two minutes and 26 seconds and get 20? Because assistant coach Ty Lu finally said, LeBron, this is insane. We got it. We're good. Okay, Please me, come sit by okay, me for the last two okay, minutes and 34 if, if you seconds. Don't, if you don't mind me asking. He led the NBA in minutes played last year. Mm-hmm. And he's leading again. Okay. Yet he averaged 30 points for the entirety of the playoffs and had a triple-double in the finals. They lost the finals not because LeBron was tired, but because the Warriors were the better team. Mm. But what I'm starting to see with you... Wait, wait a second. What do you always tell me about father time? He is undefeated, correct? You... At some point, LeBron is going to pay for all these minutes to lead the league in minutes... When you get to the postseason, in year 20. at some point. In year 20. In year 20, he's in year 15 Exactly. Now. That's what he'll pay oh. for it in year 20. Ooh. And instead of averaging 28 a game, he'll just average like 23.7 mm. in year 20. Mm. That's what he's going to do. But what I'm starting to notice about you, since it's my time on the clock, <laughs> what I'm starting to notice about you is that when LeBron put up these monster stat lines, mm-hmm. you go to the amount of minutes that he's played. Well, how Le- can I not? You're playing the worst team in the league at home. Hold on. You didn't say anything about Russell Westbrook putting up those numbers. I don't. We don't talk about Russell yes, we, Westbrook. I don't. We shouldn't. They're twelve and fifteen. I don't care. Why are we talking we'll talk about, about him yesterday? James in Harden. The negative. James Harden. Skip. Have how, we lauded Russell Westbrook? You no. should. Why, why are you lauding him? I'm not. You shouldn't. I'm just saying. You shouldn't. This is about LeBron. It, don't it, make it about someone. Don't it, deflect the blame. No, there's Let no deflection. Let it hit him right in the middle of the there's, forehead. LeBron James trains for this very moment. He trains his body. He eats. He gets the proper rest. He gets the right people around him he to does. make sure. I admire if that. If I need greatly. to go 42, I can give it to you. But if he I doesn't d- need to go 42. He just goes 42 because he is because he stuffing can. the statue. Oh, like Tom Brady tried to throw he, that pass, that touchdown? Oh, please. Oh, and they got an illegal procedure yeah. and got backed up, Joy, like that? Yeah. How, how many games do you play in the NFL? Oh, you 16. 16. Yeah. What are you doing against the Atlanta Hawks? Please explain it to me. Justify it. Okay. A one, Why ga- would he- one game in the NFL is like five games in the NBA. Or you play like eight- 20 games, Skip. really. If you play 16, 16 times five is what? 80, right, Joey? Mm. I'm good at, math, you know, mm. round numbers. As long as you can stick the zeros. You weren't good at I'm not, but as long as you stick the zero, <laughs> keep the zeros and five stuff on the end, I can come up to even numbers. I'm good with stuff okay. like that. Okay, how can you justify that many minutes against that bad a team? Help me out. It's, it's clear what he's doing, and I'm okay with it. He is stuffing the stat sheet. He cannot catch that ghost in Chicago in the NBA Finals. It's over. The ghost was 6-0. and He's 3-5, hey. and it's just well, going to get well, worse. Joe, well, well, Tom Brady ain't the goat then because Joe Montana was 4-0. and That boat is long sailed. Wait. You told me well, even told before you. the Super Bowl, you said that Tom Brady is better than Joe Montana. Until, until, you admitted it. Until, hey, I'm like LeVar. I say a lot of things in the heat of the moment. Oh, <laughs> the heat of the moment. Oh, but here's take the, it skip, back. Skip, here's the thing. Mm. At some point in time, 
Just marvel at the greatness. I, in I which am. You see. But you know what? No, no. I'm, I'm going to give you this. In year 15, he is a little better than he's ever been. The, the numbers scream it. But I'm not going to give you some, what was last night, Tuesday night against Cleveland, even pre-Christmas. I keep telling you, the NBA season starts on Christmas Day. But here's the thing, though. But you would get when, when Kyrie was scoring 37 and 47 on a Wednesday and on a Tuesday, you had no problem. He's 25 years old and had the audacity to say, I'm going to go with this young team over here, and I want the king. Uh, yeah, and LeBron I'm said, I'm staying in the and, East. And LeBron said, I'm going to put foots in you. Okay, we'll put foots, but but you're putting foots in the, <laughs> you're putting foots in the Hawks. Yeah, with the too. Hawks. And the you're, Mavericks, you're just, and we put foots in. piling up stats uh, against and, the Atlanta and Hawks. We, and we did the Hornets the same way, and the Mavs, because the Mavs gave it to y'all. Because think about it, Skip, this is what, this is what, we're going to talk about this later. Ka uh, uh, Kawhi came back, mm -hmm. and guess what? Y'all still going to be third. The Warriors you, you, and the... You are so wrong about that. You, wh I'm going to bite my tongue until we discuss this. Bite it! Yeah, because <laughs> he's coming for you. He don't want to see Bron. He don't want to see hey, Bron. Bron doesn't want to see them, him you and them in the finals. You see me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to give you this. LeBron is averaging career high 58% from the field. That's sensational. It's awe-inspiring. Mm -hmm. I give it up to you. Mm -hmm. He's 42% from the three-point line. It's unheard of. It's go, career go high. Go finish above 40. It, it won't last. Want to bet? Yeah. Want to bet? No, you don't want to bet. I, I want to bet. Because you, you already bet me like 12 cases of Diet Mountain Dew that he's going to finish above 80 in, from the free throw line. Be there. And he's at 76 right That's now. That's okay. And it's starting to teeter. No, 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 no. starting to Watch. trend down. The next two games, he'll be yeah. like 10 or 11. It'll mm. bump it right on back up to like 79.3. He's also averaging a career high four turnovers a game. But I'm going to just let that one go for now because we're talking good LeBron. But great no, LeBron. But skip. He's attempting things that he who else would attempt that pass behind the back for us? Kyle He's over three. Clowning the Hawks. We clown He's everybody. Clowning them. We clown it's, everybody. It's, it's, it's the like, Wiz. The, seriously, them. the Hawks were the. Do you remember the Washington Generals? Who yes, had I remember. To play every night the against Golden the Globetrotters. Yes. Yeah, they're just the paid extras. You know, like they're but just you, supposed to put on. You know, but you said that. You, you said that about the, the Hornets that beat the Hornets. that beat OKC. Because everybody, LeBron, LeBron give people the business, and then you do. Okay, well, if he plays somebody legit and he gives them the business, I'll come in here and say, that was legit. They, play, they played Houston. They lost the game, but did he not give them the business? No, he lost the game. Oh, so. What, what is your restaurant? Know, what's in the okay, restaurant? Okay, so I just want to make sure. Lost the okay, game. Right. If so, he had won the okay, game, so, so I'm me, good. I just want to make sure. serving moral victories No, now? no, no, no. So I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Mm -hmm. So LeBron James can have a game where he scores 10 points, shoot four of 26, uh, from the field, as long as they win, everything's all good. I just okay. want to get you on record okay. saying that. Give me Golden State, give me San Antonio, give me somebody legit from the West, or give me Boston. Give me Boston. We just did Boston. You did it in the opening Open game. It. It, the, they Damn, lost they Gordon count. Hayward. Opening games don't count. First game of the season don't count. They lost Gordon Hayward. A Paul was cast we, over the whole game. Don't worry about it. I mean, they were, they, they were. When we put the foots up in him. Put foots up in him. You foots. were losing when Gordon Hayward yeah. went down. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Kyrie. Yeah. No mercy. Dak Prescott finished with three touchdown passes and threw for over 300 yards for the first time this year as the Cowboys blew out the Giants on Sunday. Dallas is now 7-6 and six, heading into their Sunday night matchup in Oakland. Yesterday, Jerry Ooh. Jones complimented Dak on his work ethic and even compared him to an all-time great. Jerry said, quote, he's a tremendous worker. And you used to hear those kinds of things about Peyton Manning, just how much he invested in everything he does every practice. Hmm. Did mm. you see that throw to Jason Witten in the end zone? <laughs> Bullet. We're I'm joined by Rob hands. Ryan. Woo. Welcome, Rob. Spent two years as the Great Cowboys defensive here. coordinator. Mm. Shannon, let me start with you. Do you have a problem with yes, your yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it's not... It's not good enough now, Rob, to give somebody a compliment. You know, he studies really hard. He prepares. Mm -hmm. We got to go to all-time great. <laughs> it's not good enough to say, you know what, she looks good, but she looks better than this person. Oh, skip. Mm. What about, hold on. You had a Hall of Famer in Troy Aikman. You had a Tony Romo. Mm -hmm. So if I'm Tony Romo, if I'm Troy Aikman, I'm feeling some type of way. You bypassed us and talk about somebody you have no knowledge about. I've heard about the Loch Ness Monster. I heard about Bigfoot. I haven't seen him. Have he seen Peyton Manning prepare? Peyton Manning came into the NFL with that. Mm. Peyton, Peyton Manning was this Christmas toy. No assembly required. You take it out the box, Joy, and you start playing with it. That's what Peyton Manning was. It, they didn't tell Peyton, oh, Peyton, now be careful with the ball. 
Peyton Manning, I think, led the league in interceptions this rookie year. Yep. They, hey, they say, Peyton, figure it out. Mm. He didn't have a guy to, you know, hey, mm. we're going to run the ball 50 times a game. We're going to let you throw it 10 times a game mm. so you have a good QBR. Mm. That is what Peyton Manning did. Why do we have to go to all-time great? Oh, he has a nice arm. Oh, his arm's better than John Elway or Brett Fa can the guy just have a nice arm, Rob? Why can't Dak just, you know what, Dak, I, I've seen the maturation. Mm -hmm. My question, if I'm Dak Prescott, I'm having me a press conference. You ain't say that last year. Mm -hmm. Romo was around, you ain't say nothing like that. You ain't even give me a vote of confidence. Mm -hmm. Had old Romo lurking around in the background in the hallway looking at me side eye trying to Tanya Harding me. Mm -hmm. But you ain't say that last mm -hmm. year. But now all of a sudden, you ain't got nobody but me. Mm -hmm. Oh, he studied hard. He was studying hard at old Peyton Manning. You criticized old Doug Peterson when he said that about well, walking so through. Well, so did you. I did. Mm -hmm. And I got a problem with this. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to talk about somebody got Peyton Manning Yeah, but he at. didn't just say Peyton's work ethic, Doug Peterson. He said he sees traits like I Alan see it. Drake, I see it too. Peyton and I Brett Favre in Walk It To Him Win. I saw it. I saw it on display Sunday, yeah, Joy. Yeah, you did. This is what I know. Yeah. Your guy without Zeke went three games without throwing a touchdown. My guy on a torn ACL on one play throw a touchdown. That's all I saw. You saw that too, huh, Rob? I mean, he was, <laughs> he, he was actually thrown to another receiver, but that's okay. On a torn it's okay. ACL. It's okay. It's okay. My he guy did. got a torn ACL, throw yep. the touchdown. Your guy without Zeke, healthy, mm. five picks. Zero tubs mm. in three games. Take it away, Rob. Mm. I know you I, upset, I too. I'll tell you what. Mm. And then he got a star on his elbow? I have, uh, hey, he does. Skip, did That's you notice good. that? Look at mm. that. He got a cowboy star. I'm done. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done with you. I'm, I'm done. He's get the face stuff. of the franchise. I'm, I'm get my stuff. I can't. I can't. I can't. Joe, Joe, I can't. Here's, here's the thing. Of all people, you know people that hey, are emotionally invested and are passionate. Absolutely. Okay? Well, that's Jerry Jones. Mm. How many owners are out there like him? Not many. Mm. I get it. Well, should they not say anything? Look, he's passionate about his football team. Simple fact is no one looked worse for three weeks in a row than the Cowboys. All right? They come back after that Thanksgiving debacle. That was the worst. It was the worst. Jerry goes in the locker room and picks that team up. By, gi by giving them words of encouragement and things like that. And it worked. Look, they came back with Sean Lee. They've won two games in a row. Mm -hmm. They, you know, And this is a huge game, obviously, because mm -hmm. they can get uh, Elliott back. He's trying to give confidence to somebody. You know, He believes it. He, he's that encouraged and that passionate about something because he, he feels, man, this kid prepares. He does all these things. And he actually does. He, he's a young man that works hard like a veteran. So he's encouraged. T today's athletes, they're not as invested as when you guys used to play all the time. When, right. when the whole team, I mean, they all had to be together and they all had to watch film right. together on their own. Like, it was crazy. You don't see that very often anymore. And I think he's, he's so encouraged by this guy's work ethic, by the way he does go about himself, that, okay, could he have been a... Uh, you know, a little carried away. Yeah, but that's Jerry, and I think that's what makes him such a great I didn't see Peyton Man I didn't see Peyton Manning in no commercials in his second year. Hmm. Did you see that, Joey? I know you were small. A different time. Exactly, <laughs> so don't say that then. So what was he supposed to say? I wanted him to say, well, he got study habits like Jamarcus Russell. Mm. Oh, oh, okay. I was there and saw those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to go. There's you a lot did. of You saw those. I did. There, we won there's two a lot. games, and we had number three defense in football. So, Coach, we when, you coached, when you coached the Dallas Cowboys defense, how intrusive did you find Jerry Jones in what you were doing with your unit? Did, did he – No, no. He, did he, he was, was he involved? There, no, he would be there to encourage players and things like that. Did he have a couple run-ins? Every once in a while. But, look, he's the owner of the team, and he's he is passionate about it. So – uh, Stevens there, as, you know, they're working kind of as a general manager, and but no one's more invested in their team than than uh, the Jones family. So you were okay. I, I was with encouraged it. Yeah. by it. Remember, okay. I had worked for Al Davis for five years. <laughs> I I loved Al Davis, and I know. Hey, believe me, he was involved. He was involved in really my job involved. in everybody's job. <laughs> uh, what what uh, the Jones family wants is the best for their team, mm -hmm. and it's the best as they see it, and. Uh, I enjoy it. It's a breath of fresh air when you have people like that all pulling in the same direction. Mm. So when I first read the headline on this story, I eventually found it shockingly misleading because the headline said, Jerry compares Dak to Peyton Manning, and he says Dak has been better without Zeke. What? 
So as I read, I say, no, no, no. He just compared Dak's work ethic to Peyton's. How now, how know? would Jerry know? Because some coach or GM told him that Dak works as hard as Peyton. Somebody who's been around Peyton said that to Jerry. I Trust me on that, because Jerry absorbs everything he hears at, at an owner's meeting or some, 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 some coach told him that. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I agree with you. I cringed because I covered Troy Aikman, and he, you want to talk about committed? Yeah. You want to talk about yeah. nose to the grindstone? You want to talk about taking it almost too seriously, practice? Yeah. Nobody screwed up in practice or they heard about it from Troy. Yeah. So is, is Dak better than Troy in work yet? No, he's just not. Tony Romo, I get that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, because Tony, he likes to play his golf, and he likes to. I'm, we, I'm not saw, sure Tony was ever as committed. And you were around Tony. We Tony, saw Tony prepared hard. Like he was he in did. there Cooking all out. the time. And Beer. Yeah, but he, 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 he prepared. Well, maybe he is now. <laughs> but I know when he was playing quarterback, he was in that office all the time, okay. working so, by himself. And and uh, I'd see him in there all the okay, time. Okay, so the this is Jerry's new toy. It's Dak, and he's getting yeah. enthusiastic again because they've started to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And his point about he's. He was he's been better without Zeke because he had to grow up without Zeke. That's what he, it sped up his maturity. I believe process. he will be better because yes. of yes. it. Yes, it forced him to go yeah. through three of the worst games I have ever suffered through in my Cowboy fandom life because those were debacles oh, all three. Awesome. He had to go three games, so imagine what Walker to him had to do all of last year yeah. when he didn't have no running game. It he, forced him to grow he up. He had to go and through you, a whole year of it. That's what it was terrible. Scared. It was terrible. They had to rebuild his delivery. They rebuilt the what, what about them 33 tubs? Uh, huh? This year. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying it took the whole off season. And he going to finish yeah. in the number mm. two mm. in QBR. So, as our coach here has just pointed out, the mm. Dallas Cowboys have turned it around, and I'm intrigued by what you're seeing on the defensive side in the last two games. Now, Sean Lee came back. Oh, stop, stop it. Well, no, I want to hear. Mean, the, the crazy this thing guy is knows. this. Here's the thing. It's, it's obvious now. Look, Sean makes a huge difference for that team on defense. Yeah. He really does. And they play good defense when he's there. When he's not there, they're the worst defense in football. They I are. mean, that's that's just – I mean, Shannon, I've never seen a game like the that? Thanksgiving game Simple. where the Chargers absolutely abused them. That was that was the worst I've seen a defense okay. play. What about that pick six that Dak threw? Should that was Sean Lee's fault? No. But okay, what about that roll – when he threw that – Was, that, was he not court? trying to get the team back in, in the Shannon, game? I mean, at, that, at, that point, at that point, You've he was just trying apart. to make a play. But, look, that's not him. To me, Dak is – he's going to see the open receiver and get the ball to the open receiver. It's what he does best. And he protects the football. When, when, you, get in an end the of, when you get in an end-of-game situation and you're getting blown out by 40 points – and he can't stop anybody. Now he's trying to do too Which much. Which is what happened at Denver. And last year when they ran the ball, they had the league's leading rusher. Right. And, they didn't and that makes a huge difference. A huge Especially with a quarterback that, that's built the way Dak is, who's going to protect so the team. What, what happened to Tom Brady on Monday night? They had 25 yards rushing, and he threw two interceptions. Yeah. 43 okay. attempts. It yeah. happened to the greatest quarterback ever. No. Every Montana. quarterback needs a little. Are you back on? <laughs> oh, now you've switched. I like, you I'm jumped back on like the Brady. Montana bandwagon. I like Brady. I'm, 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 I won two Super Bowls I'm, with Brady. I'm, 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 I'm out on that. Man, he getting tattoos. He getting tattoos. So what happened when he get traded or he get released you know, from the Cowboys? What are you going to do with that? I will agree with one point you made. I'm starting to get a little nervous because every other commercial now features Dak Prescott. Ah. And it took a little time to make all those commercials because you know how long it takes to make uh, a commercial. Yeah. Can we do that again? That was great. But can we do it one more time? Mm. Mm -hmm. How about take 60? Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> well, if you're good, you don't have to do that many times. Uh, no, they make it. Skip, where did our commercial go air? I don't did know. They, did they? No. We had a, we did a cowboy commercial. Oh. I think that thing got canned real early. Mm. <laughs> he got a tat. Uh, mm. Joy. He got a cowboy tattoo. He's the face of the Maybe franchise. Maybe he just like likes the design. He, Lots of people have that tattoo. People get star tattoos. No, they don't. No, 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 no. They don't play for the Cowboys. Mm. No. So Listen. what happened? What happened if he played for another team? What are you gonna do? He gonna get another? Well, I was gonna say. I hope he doesn't get traded. I mean, what he just change the color? What are you gonna get? A, what are you gonna get? What are you gonna get? A giant tattoo? <laughs> yeah. I mean, gonna get the. I mean, what, what's what going on? What are you gonna get a tattoo? Oh no. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You can't see it if I did get it, so <laughs> I'd be wasting my, I'd be wasting my money. <laughs> Skip, mm. why Jerry didn't say Tony Romo? Cause you saw how he come after training. He he had all off season, and then he come in overweight. Mm. How you do that? Well, Rob said he's committed during the season. He is. The cookout. Tony Romo is. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rob, 
You saw that picture. You saw that picture with that jersey. I actually didn't see it, but I, you know. You heard about I it. Don't, it. Hey, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know he's committed. No mercy. Aaron Rodgers is back. NFL Network is reporting Rodgers will start for the 7-6 and six Packers at Carolina on Sunday. Rodgers posted this old image of himself in a hospital bed saying he's been medically cleared to return. He broke his right collarbone back in October, but has reportedly been impressive at practice the last couple weeks. Shannon, should the Packers start Rodgers? Yes, if he's medically cleared and the player feel confident that he can go out there and get the job done, he should play. He's a football player, Skip, and that's what he does. He was, he was hired to play the game of football, to be the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Now, medically, hey, you're good to go. Is healed. We looked at the scans. We looked at the x-rays, the MRIs, whatever test they've given him, you're good. Okay, Aaron, how do you feel? Because remember, we saw a situation very similar to this a couple of years ago with Tony Romo. Tony Romo felt good the first game, nothing happened. But the moment he got hit and got planted on that shoulder, guess what? He was out again, cracked. I, I think Romo elected not to have surgery. surgery. So, okay. but, but whatever, it's the same yes. idea. Yes, so we're going we're gonna to find out. But yeah. I believe he should play Skip if yeah. he's been cleared, if he, feel, if he feels confident that he can go out there and get the job done. Yeah. But throwing scout team, when you have a red jersey on, as opposed to being the starting quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, mm -hmm. you have something on the line. The Carolina Panthers have something on the they line. Do. And your jersey is just like everybody else's. Yep. They're not going to lay you down. They're not going to, okay, get close to you and pull off. They're going to try to put you down on that shoulder. So if you feel comfortable that you can go out there and get the job done, Skip, I got no problem with it. But he needs to understand what comes along with this. Well, he posted yesterday that he was cleared. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to accept his word for it. Yes. I don't know exactly what the Packers think, if they're still 50-50 on it. Right. But to me, I'm going to speak as if I'm in Aaron Rodgers' shoes right now. Mm -hmm. This is no-brainer to me. I'm just going to play. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. The NFC right now is on a silver platter for somebody to win because in all my years of covering the NFL, I can't remember especially the NFC being this wide open this late mm -hmm. because Vegas now favors Vikings just slightly over Eagles to win the NFC. And the Vikings have Case Keenum at quarterback, and the Eagles have Nick Foles at quarterback. So I, oh. guess, I guess they like Case Keenum a little better than Nick Foles. Okay. Well, that – okay, so – then I look down the list and I say, Falcons, Saints, it's okay, Rams, Seahawks. They, they're all flawed in Carolina. They, they have all had some positives and some scary negatives uh -huh. this year. All of them have yes. had. Well, you said, really? That's it? And so if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I say, and again, I'm going off the football power index here. Mm -hmm. it, it gives Green Bay a 9% chance of making the playoffs. But if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I think, what if we pull this off? So they got to go to Carolina, then they get the Vikings at home on a Saturday night, and then they have to finish at Detroit. Not that easy. Right. But what if he pulled that off and he got in the tournament? Of all the teams that you mentioned, you mentioned Seattle, you mentioned the Rams, you mentioned the Eagles, you mentioned mm -hmm. Minnesota and the Panthers. Mm -hmm. What can all of them do? Hit your quarterback. I can hit your quarterback. All of them, with the exception of Green Bay, routinely Hit your quarterback. Okay, but this quarterback, if he gets in the tournament and faces any of those quarterbacks, would I give him the quarterback edge over any of these teams? I would. No, seriously. Skip, if he has to go on the road against Philly, if he has to face any of those defenses. Okay, I got you. Okay, but if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I'm starting to get up there in age and I'm looking back at what I've accomplished in my career – it has now been seven seasons since he won his one and only Super Bowl and his one and only Super Bowl appearance. Seven seasons. He is five and six since that Super Bowl victory in the postseason. Five and six, and he is 0 and 2 in NFC Championship games. Well, it's starting to feel a little bit to me like Tiger esque, where I tweeted this the other day after the Bahamas tournament. Tiger hasn't won a major in all, go, almost 10 years, going on 10 years, mm -hmm. and he's still times 10 the biggest name in golf. Right. Well, that's just mind-blowing to me. Right. Well, it's, it's sort of – this is starting to happen to Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. He's still regarded as the – quote. I don't regard him, but a lot of people do, including you mm -hmm. and many others on the show, the best quarterback in football. Well, he doesn't have much to show for it 
in the last seven, going on eight. Well, seasons. this would be if if he were to pull this off, if he were to come back and he yeah. would go three and zero and then make the playoffs, this will be his second greatest accomplishment. Going four and zero in the playoffs oh. would be obviously number one, but this would be his second greatest accomplishment because you're beating the teams. You look at those teams' record. Carolina, what are they? Eight and four. Um, well, I, nine would, and four now. Wouldn't this be his biggest accomplishment? Well, I no, mean, the Super off, no, no, not not. Well, can't. what if they go in the Super Bowl? What, well, well, yeah, well, obviously that would do it. Because think about it, Skip. He had to go on the road. He went on the road he every did. game no, was, to do what he it, and uh, ended up doing what he did. Um, but Skip, I, I agree with you. He should play. He's been cleared. The doctor says, "Hey, you get a clean bill of health from us." Aaron says, "Hey, he's tweeting it like he feels good, like he feels confident that where he is right now medically." So, with that being said, hey. Brett Hundley did exactly what you'd ask a backup quarterback to do. Sure. He kept them in striking distance. He did. Now you bring the big gun in. Okay, bring us home. That's all you can hope, Skip. You, you ran the relay. Joe, you ran the relay. I ran the relay. All I wanted to do was keep, keep it close. Keep it close to the big dangle leg. Let old Big Shay come home. Oh, you, you were in here? I you went, did hey. not run big anchor. Shirt, wait a second. You're a 4840 guy. You did not run I went, anchor. I'm waving them home. Come on. Get, just no, keep it no, close. Wait. He's waving from the side. No, 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 no. I really go, go, no, no, go. No. Not, not, not on the mile relay. Mile relay. Mile the mile relay. relay? Yeah. You were in the mile yeah, relay. Four by four. Yeah. Mm. I ran second leg in the four by four by one. That's not anchor. On the mile relay, I was the anchor leg. Anchor. Yeah, but your school had like fifty kids in it, right? But I mean, we both blowing the doors off some of the kids that had fifteen hundred kids okay. up in it. All right. You know what I'm saying, Joy? I hated the 400. Okay, back to reality. <laughs> that was reality. Uh, yeah, reality. <laughs> so there are two teams that have minuscule chances of even making the playoffs that I, I would love to see in the playoffs, and that would be Aaron Rodgers' no. team, and that would be the Stop! Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys. Ain't they, not gonna happen. According to Football Power Index, they have a 4% Four. chance. 4%. Four. Aaron's got a 9%. Get either of those teams in. Get Dallas in no with either. Zeke and Ain't with no Sean either. Lee. One of them. Huh? Green Bay. Okay. Well, fine. But either one of them, I would like their chances. So In fact, I, I would love their chances. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, that's, so that's anything's possible because they gave Doug Jones going into the last night, they gave him like 3% chance and he won. Mm. So anything's possible, Skip. But it's not going to happen. Mm. So I don't want you to get your hopes up. I don't have any hopes. Yeah, I'm just do. telling you, hypothetically, if either Aaron Rodgers or Dak and company got into the playoffs, that would be dangerous to anybody who faced Santa them. Santa will not be bringing mm. you any playoff mm. success. I don't know. If that's what you're hoping to open in a couple of weeks, mm. it's not going to happen. Well, I don't know. I know. There's a committee. You know, they got a new deal in pro football. It's like college. The committee has to vote. No, I ain't no, 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 no. The committee's going to do the eye test on Dallas after they win out, and they're going to say, they're in. And that's what I love about the NFL, because yeah. you know what you got to do, Skip? Mm. You got to play your way in. Mm. And a lot of these other sports, you play your way out. You look at hockey, they damn take it almost everybody to the playoff. Basketball, you got to just be like 20 and 62 for you not to make the playoff. Mm. But in the NFL, mm. you play your way mm. in. What's your, currently, what does your eye test tell you right my now? My eye test tell me, walk it to him is the MVP, mm. and Philly ain't to be monk mm. with. But walk it to him can barely walk now. That's all right. Yeah. Fold them bowls. Mm. Bowls got some... You know what, Skip? I, I'm hoping mm -hmm. with a chance to make yeah. the playoffs that y'all go into that last game against the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And the Eagles need that last game to secure home field. Mm -hmm. And I want Jim Schwartz to turn them loose. Mm. I want him to turn them loose. Mm. Go look at Foles Gold in his first year starting in Philly against Dallas at Philly. That was long, long time ago. Okay. Long time ago. Yep. You remember that? Remember the Titans? When he called them over there, he said, I don't want them to get another yard. Mm. <laughs> Jim Swartz go, hey, he gonna call a timeout. Mm -hmm. I would love this. Fletcher Cox. We gotta get to Barnett, the Barnett, Chris Long, we win Jernigan. Woo! And Brandon Graham. We're taking them one at a time. We got Oakland next. Come on, Oakland. Come yeah, on, Beast come Mode. On, yep. Keep Khalil. Real. You cried the first time you watched Remember the Titans. And then they played that. You know, actually, I was in Baltimore, and they played that on the montage. They had it up there with all our quotes. Tennessee, the crowd was going frenzy. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Whatever they say we said, we said it. What y'all gonna do about it? Did you make one catch? Hey, you're right. Big play. Shay! <laughs> hey, Shay. <laughs> no mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again same time tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one.
of one.